Peace be with you. This is Ben Thompson with the Free Citizens of America. Today we're going to talk about something very important, and that is the Second Amendment. Now the Founders believed that the people should retain their weapons. It doesn't matter what age it is, and it doesn't matter what kind of weapon. During the Founders' time there were guns, and so that was the standard weapon of the time, and the Founders believed that the people should be armed to protect themselves uh, from any illegal force against them, whether it be from their neighbor, from an invading army, or from the government itself. Now, the Torah also has this idea that every man should be armed. and. One of the reasons why the Founders knew that they had to create an armed citizenry was because of the Torah. The Founders and the people, especially the early colonies, saw themselves as part of the House of Israel, at least adoptively, and they were trying to recreate an Israel-like country uh, when they came over here. That's why the original colonists, when they came over, most of them es established colonial charters that were n almost identical to portions of the Torah. And this idea of the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms, is part of the Torah. And so let me show you how that is. The very first idea that we have to understand comes directly from one of the names for the Lord. In Hebrew, it would say Adonai Tzabeoth. And we, we use the term Adonai in, replace of, in place of the name of God in Hebrew to keep the name of the God sa of sacred. But the word Tzabeoth means armies. It's translated as hosts in most places in the in the Bible, especially when connected to the name of God. But it comes, Sabaoth is a plural form of Tzaba, which means armies or hosts. But the Torah itself shows that the Lord is talking about armies. And that means those who follow the Lord are part of His army. Now, Exodus chapter 6, verse 26, from the King James Version, it says, in talking about Moses and Aaron, it says, These are that Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies. Now this shows that the Lord, when he was speaking of the children of Israel, he saw them as his army. And it says plural form of armies, meaning the twelve tribes of Israel. They were his armies. Now, this thought goes even further in Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13, verse 18, it says, But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness, of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Now this word here, harnessed, in Hebrew it actually means um, armed for war, basically. Now of course there's some debate on this. One thought is of course that they were armed literally for war. The next the other thought is that by arming for war that means that they went in columns as soldiers and both ideas are acceptable because both show that the Lord thought of the house of Israel as his as his army and I like the the first idea better because it shows directly that the people were supposed to be armed every man now in numbers chapter 2 
verse 2, it shows that the tribes are organized in their in their armies according to their 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 banners. It says every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of his father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. And on the east side toward the rising of the sun shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitched throughout throughout their armies, and Nashon the son of Amminadab shall be captain of the children of Judah, and it goes on and on listing the the armies of the tribes, and who will be their 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 captains. And this this banner is a banner for war, meaning that you march with that banner. So each each uh, t t tribe was to follow their banner into battle. <coughs> now, uh, if we go a chapter back, uh, Numbers 1, verse 3, it says, uh, the whole purpose of the book of Numbers in the beginning is actually to make an, a, a census of the children of Israel so that they could go to war. And it says, uh, this is what it says concerning the age of men who were to go to war. It says, from twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. So every man in Israel who was twenty years old and was physically able to, was numbered among the armies. There was no volunteer, there was no standing army, except for the fact that every man was a soldier in the army. Now if we go to Numbers chapter 11, verse 21 it says in the in the first part and Moses said the people among whom I am are 600,000 footmen so they didn't have any advanced uh, soldier units they were all footmen meaning basically in that time they probably carried a staff with a with a pointed end or whatever they could get their, their hands on, and that's what was the weapons that they used. Now, in uh, Numbers 31, we see that the Lord did establish a military structure. He says, And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds which came from the battle. So they had, and when they were in war, they had captains of 100s and captains of thousands. I wouldn't doubt if they had lesser captains as well. And this whole thing shows that the, the men of Israel were supposed to be armies. And that means that all of us who follow the Lord are to be considered soldiers in the Lord's army. Now, because the Lord has uh, cast off Israel and replaced it with the Gentiles for the t uh, for the time being, uh, that means all of us in in thinking of, of America, we are as the Lord's people, and that that means every man from 20 plus is to be considered a soldier in the nation and that means every single one of us of men who are 20 and older and physically able to do so is supposed to be armed now on the other side of that we are not supposed to have a standing army a large standing army now of course you could have a smaller size standing army 
But I would even disagree with that. Because the only reason to have a standing army is that you want to have a group of people who are separate from everybody else and who are paid for by top people and those people receive orders from the people paying them. And it usually turns towards oppression of the people. If we follow the Lord's system, we would not need a standing army and we would all be armed to the best of our ability. And we would each be in charge of our own d defense weapons. Now just imagine this, if every single man 20 and above was armed, and physically able to was armed, then nobody could invade us. Now the only time we are supposed to be invading other nations is when the Lord himself says so through his prophets. Now the prophets, at least for the, the, the as, as far as the world is concerned, the, there is no uh, servant of God who directs nations to go to war. So that means we are directing ourselves, and if we are following the Lord's way, we are not supposed to be invading other armies. We are only supposed to be protecting ourselves. Now, the founders did create a standing army. They felt that it was necessary, but it was a very small one. And I, I do agree that it is okay to, to have a standing army as long as it is a very small one too. Now this is, is separate from thinking about navies, and, and now since we're in that age, the Air Force, we do need a standing navy and a standing Air Force for the purpose of defense. And these people do need to be full-time um, Navy sailors and Air Force because they have to be trained in those units. And so I perfectly agree with having a standing Navy and a standing Air Force. The Constitution calls for a standing Navy. And that it is in, in control of the... by the higher level. I mean, they, they saw no problem with that because a navy cannot really oppress a people. They could theoretically oppress a shoreline but that oppression would not last long because those ships need to be supplied from the shore. Now there's this idea that guns are bad so people shouldn't have them because people could use them to hurt people. Guns themselves are not bad, it's the people who use them. Now, whether or not you believe in that way, it doesn't matter if we are following the Lord's plan. Because the Lord says that every man 20 and above is to be armed and prepared for defense of the nation. And that is the path I follow, and that, and any other philosophy that would take that away is opposite to what the Lord wants. If you believe in the Lord, if you believe in God of the Bible, this goes for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Every man is supposed to be armed who is 20 and physically able to, to be armed. And so I urge the American people to repent of their false ideas and to return to the Torah and the path that the Lord has established. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.